24th, I want to, yeah, 24th. Uh, as you know, we didn't have a live stream last week because everyone was busy. Like, we're busy humans once a year. Just once a year. And it's not even Christmas. It's like midsummer. People are out vacationing. <laughs> and we're just busy working in our fluff farms trying to turn over the harvest. But we're here now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we to get that so we can make fluffy coats and fluffies. Exactly. So today we have BFC. Hello. And we have Princess Fluffy's Eye, the fluff leader. I'm overseeing the, the fluff excavation. <laughs> and there might be text from cute pencil case and fluffy things drawn too. Who knows? Maybe? Probably. Oh, Almost this is unmuted Strangosaurus. And a dino, possibly. We aren't sure, but we're going to see. Uh, living dead. Hi. Hello. <laughs> uh, good day. So, good day. So the first picture we have is drawn by Anacronian. No, Anarchy Onion. <laughs> oh, that makes more sense. <laughs> Anarchy Onion. Yes. Okay. Uh, Anacronian, which is also a great name. <laughs> All right, so their question is, or their post is, I felt like something is wrong with her body, but I can't tell exactly what. Mm-hmm. First, the first thing I have to ask, firstly, the, the wings kind of are joined together in one thing, unless she's wearing like a back glider accessory or something glued to her back, the, the, they should still have their own little shoulder joints. Um, but what I wanted to ask, are these wings going behind the arms, like they're tucked in front of her body? Um, if they're supposed to be behind, then they then they should be very deliberately. Uh, I'm not sure what angle. That's probably too steep. But uh, uh, if they're going behind, then they're probably going to cover most of the arm like that. But that's just how the wings would be because they're they're quite big. You could then you could bring the arm up like this way a bit just to sort of emphasize that it's there. Um, but it, it's kind of a weird thing to have it like tucked under the arm because that seems like it's the the backwards of how the layering layering would be. Uh, I say arm instead of four legs just because they're walking on two legs. Um, it's easier to visualize. So there is an updated one where they've changed some of the lines on the back. It looks like they've okay. erased chunks of the wing, but they do say in that post that they're going to reposition the wings. Okay, yeah. All right, that makes sense, yeah. I mean, in the in the updated one, it's like you can't even see it on the back, so it looks like it's coming out of the tummy. Yeah. So I would assume, I would assume they are still just like working on that. Uh, but yeah, just a little bit of advice there, so that when you do re- reposition them, hopefully you have a little bit of an idea. Um, as for body, um, it's difficult because ponies aren't meant to walk like this. I definitely feel this back leg here is kind of off in some way, um, but it's hard to tell how exactly it should be. You've got like, I... a very human butt going on, um, rather than like a rather than like a pony pony one. But like it's it's difficult anatomy because it's not sensible, you know. We're breaking rules here. Maybe you try bending this leg down like this one, so it's it's going this way and not this way, and that would help a little bit. It's that right leg that's really throwing this off for me. Mm. Yeah, if I could maybe. Oh yeah, by all uh, means. But but in uh, sometimes it's I think uh, what helps me at least to uh, figure out which kind which part of a drawing is like off or causing trouble. Um, first, right. of course, huh? cover it up and see if the drawing looks better exactly <laughs> do, exactly yeah. yeah it's like ah oh, okay does it look better mm. i usually okay. just hold my hand over the screen and just be like, okay yeah <laughs> yeah yeah exactly i cover parts up and this is this is maybe mean but uh i mean is the body the problem uh, i don't think so it looks kind of okay now you know yeah but uh, like from from what okay of course the wings but you already uh, covered uh, covered some improvements there um, I think that maybe the arm is one one thing that may uh, yeah yeah maybe so. it could could be improved. Yeah, I think so it's because it. yeah because of the rib cage. Usually you'd see that the elbow goes to about where your rib cage ends. Yeah, and uh, I th- I feel that this may be a little short. It's kind of like tucked very far on the back. Like if you get your arm. Pull your shoulder back and try to position. See your elbows kind of at the back like that. That's a very uncomfortable position. I think like the body should kind of be in front. If you did that, it might make it feel a little bit more natural. 
because mm-hmm. just, just do, do the pose with your actual body, and it gives you a, a good clue over what makes sense. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, move the elbow a bit, bit mm-hmm. further down, and then, yeah. Yeah. And it depends what sort of uh, position you want with the arm, because this is a very ca- casual sort of pose. I would have, have the arms in quite a, a casual sort of way like this as well. Um, I see you're trying to do like a walking thing, so if you're sort of doing like the arm walky thing, then that's uh, that's where it gets tricky. But yeah, references help with that. So I think. Uh, oh no, what... my my stuff, the tail I was drawing, but... rubbed out. Oh yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, we, we were on the same layer. <laughs> sorry. It happens. Apparently we. I are. didn't realize. I didn't realize either. Otherwise, I would have drawn it on a different layer. I was just trying to make. That's okay. It's good to be able to experiment with drawing something multiple times. Anyway, see, we get like a little art lesson in here. You know, if you draw something, it's like, yeah, that's okay. Try drawing it again, and sometimes you get it better. Mm. Even if you don't really have, even if it's not wrong, you can sometimes make it better. Just trying to experiment. Want to get that loose hair feeling in, so it doesn't feel stiff. Remember, it's a the tail and mane and everything are a collection of little hairs in big strands. So you want it to have that swoosh, especially like this, because you got this going on anyway. I like this. You kind of get this like swoosh, like the tail's waving as she walks, and that that looks really nice. So I think the pose of the tail is pretty good. But like if you emphasize this, like this motion here. Oops, I do not have a good a secondary color. If you emphasize this motion, like hey, this this roundness. It's it's making your mind think of the motion of swish, swishing this way. So that makes it, it... It makes the picture have a lot of life to it. And that's what you're trying to do. It's a, it's a moving pose, so you want that life in there. I think with the legs, it's a perspective issue as well. I mean, yeah. uh, I think the the lower legs, up until here, it's okay. But the body is too far down, actually, in uh, relation to the ground, you know? Because it kind of looks like it would end about they're, they're, here. They're, they're nice pony legs, especially with the, the drawing we've just done on it. That's right. Uh, but it's but it's it's hard. Like we said, it's hard to make that work in a human pose because we're breaking some serious like pony anatomy rules. That and yeah. the the top. I, I mean, there is foreshortening here, so it makes sense. But like the the arms are much shorter. Like, yeah, but... like, there is a lot of, like, perspective, like, the ground is just bigger. You can see that by, like, the disappearing point. Um, so it, it would make sense for the... I did that too big, see? Um, the, the, the four legs to be a little bit on the, the bigger side, but I feel like that if you look at them comparatively, they just are a bit too... Even with your brain, like, calculating the difference in perspective, it does sort of feel a little bit a little bit off. Yeah, I think uh, Q pencil case is right. The body is too long for the for the shorter legs. I think as well. Uh, like if the legs go a bit go a bit longer. Or what do you think? I I think I would change up the the way the the feet are sitting, because mm-hmm. with the with the big curve, basically we have this curve in the body like this, as Mace Temporal has said. There's a big curve backwards, and oh, yeah, I mean... because that lean forwards is happening, because that makes this area right here on the butt further back than the rest of the chest, and that's going to either, well, that's going to unbalance you as you step, so that front leg is, or that right leg is going to have to make up for that. So the way you can make it look like this back leg is actually in a stride rather than what's making contact to shift the entire weight forward is by showing us the, the hoof of it as though it's kicking out the back of the foot. Much like you do as a person when you stride, you lift up the your heel and roll to the, the ball. Or wait, what is that? Yeah, the front's the ball, right? Yeah, anyway, you roll to the front of your toes as you step. So we can give that look here by showing the bottom of the hoof. And then it's going to visu- er, visually shift the weight of the body towards the front. Mm-hmm. Really, your horse is just love gagging. Raise those hooves, dang it. <laughs> uh, the other thing was, uh, I wanted to ask, where exactly is this character looking at the moment? Like, where is their gaze supposed to be? Because we look at it as it is, she's actually kind of looking nowhere. This eye is kind of going kind of towards the camera. This one's going down this way. 
and like the, there's no discernible like and the head is very far twisted back like that is i can't even look that far over uh it's, it's very far towards towards the camera there um but there's there's no the, the face is very sunken into the body like it really should be sort of out this way at the very least uh but like, the chin is like here and the neck is you know like the, that would that does not really make much anatomical sense um so if i can it's not gonna let me undo my so, erasing no, Woohoo! i have to draw it again <laughs> so That's sometimes okay. so fluffy's eye just to answer one of your questions she's supposed to be looking at her wing okay i was suspecting as such um i just wanted to clarify but yeah uh now i get to to re reinforce what I said earlier, that uh, drawing things a second time, even if it's not what I wanted to do, <laughs> that's okay. This program can be weird sometimes. Um, it is hard to see my lines on this. I'm gonna switch red. Uh, but if we just bring, try and bring the try and bring the the, the, the head out a bit, you obviously don't have to use the this kind of like snout and eye style. It's just like it's just my jam. Um, but uh, yeah, you wanna. Actually, I'm gonna do like a sort of slightly more, if I can, slightly more human shape, just to, or at least like a softer shape anyway, just to sort of emphasize. So like, um, it's really hard. I'm making the head way too big, but so you got the chin, chin and be around here, and then it, the jaw is going up this way. I just erase the nose for a second. I'm just drawing like draw like a human-ish face shape, just to oops, just to show you. Um, so like cheek comes down into chin uh this isn't perfect but whatever and then it's going to go up up into the jaw because uh you know that you've got like a skull here and you've got a jaw line which leads directly into the chin uh you're not going to see all of it but then this this will will lead into the neck and then look we've got a much nicer connection there uh again not perfect i'm just sort of scribbling this on to give you an idea but that uh definitely shows how you can sort of build up how a head like connects to the body. And then she could be looking at things. Oh, I like maybe it. maybe this way. Uh, there we go. So I really am interested in how they are gonna stick the wings on there. Because yeah. typically wings are attached at those shoulder blades. Yeah, where Zai just mm. drew that in. Where you had your wings was like the mid back before. So raising them up and giving them the nice thick bones that they would, or the the large bones that they would normally have, they aren't actually thick, they're just large. I, I do really like the sort of like slightly lower down wings rather than being right on the shoulder blades. I do like the sort of lower back ones, but it depends on the, the kind. I mean, this is sort of more of a, a, a succubus kind of wing position, I think, but it works. Depends what you're going for. And I think in the in, with ponies, at least, they do sort of go behind the the four leg shoulders so it would be right oh yeah actually that's an idea i don't know if she's sort of like exploring her wings but she's looking at her wings you could have this one kind of like hey look moving it out and this this one can be kind of tucked in a little bit so you don't have to have it completely symmetrical she could just be sort of like having this this front wing kind of out a little bit like oh yeah i'm gonna i'm checking this checking this wing out look how look how cool and fluffy this wing is woo and any other ones kind of kind of tucked in a bit does that make sense Are we getting responses? In the YouTube videos, there's probably these long, like, pauses of silence when nothing's happening. It's like, we're just like, <laughs> waiting for people to respond because there's like a huge stream delay. All right. Are we done with this picture then? I would say so. All right. Uh, I am interested to see what you're, what you do with this picture when you're done. So either feel free to post an update in your thing or a finished product and be like, haha, it's done. Look at me, guys. You know, whatever, whatever you do. I just like to see what you get of this.
or what the finished part? Words. <laughs> I'd say it's not an e it's not an easy pose. It's also not an easy uh, yes, yes. easy with the perspective. So it is ambitious, mm -hmm. but uh, I think it can really not look nice if, uh, if some of these are addressed. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah, you're on the right track. All right. So let's go on to the next one. This one's by General Ichi. Uh, they <laughs> yeah, so I, that that leads exactly into something what I was gonna say. Uh, <laughs> unless they are supposed to be vampire ponies for some reason, ponies don't have these canine teeth. Do you know why? It is because they are herbivores. They canine teeth, as you'd expect from the name, are there because they're meant to rip apart meat. Uh, molars and stuff are the ones that sort of break apart nuts and chew grass and you know things like that. They're, they're the mashers. So you look at dinosaurs and stuff, you've got T-Rex and Velociraptors and stuff have just like all the sharp teeth because they only eat meat. And all the, the herbivores uh, have all the big flat teeth because they mash apart plants. So they are not going to have these big spiky teeth unless they are supposed to be vampires. In that case. But I mean, <laughs> yeah. I, actually, I actually find the teeth kind of freaky anyway because there's a little bit too much realism there. I think it's a little <laughs> bit uncanny valley if I'm going to be honest. Um, yeah, the, the... Cute pencil case fight. is right with the with the horse skull. I think, like if the if the teeth of of ponies were actually horse skull, uh, <laughs> yeah, realistic teeth, then they'd look pretty silly as well. Like the, I, I have <laughs> horse seen grin. I have seen mm -hmm. artists who draw them like that though. BFC with the oh. regular horse skull style teeth, and it's odd to see, but it makes sense when you look at it. You're like, ah. You were a That's horse true. artist before a pony artist. <laughs> well, I, I, I didn't draw proper horses, but I, I sort of had a little bit of experience with centaurs and stuff. Well, that's how I sort of get where that comes from. I just wasn't good at drawing centaurs, and I'm much better after learning how to draw ponies. <laughs> and then looking at actual horse anatomy to do that. Um, so, so, General <laughs> Ichi, your shading is very, very nice. But I think I know the problem that's bugging me with all this picture. You, what you're doing, or what I suspect you're doing when you're shading, is you're using the selection tool, grabbing the edges, and just doing everything within that body, which is fine because it makes perfect sense. Hey, I don't want anything outside of this selection because this is my horse. So just give me the horse selection, and I'll color everything and shade everything <laughs> within there. It's great. The problem with what it does is when you start looking further into your picture and it's not going to show up quite as well on this one because I shrunk it so I'll grab the full size real quick and everyone on the okay. stream can oh, see this okay. Okay. it's um, got some aliasing yeah the well even the oh wait that's not the full size let me, let me re-download the full sized because I have to resize these or else they barely ever load for people on the stream da, 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 da. Oh, we're waiting. I, I, I was going to say, I love CPC's doodles on the bottom. <laughs> All right. Here's the actual full size. So if we if we look in at this thing, we go stare at our edges here. We have these very aliased and hard edges. And it's because the the way it the, the selection tool works is it just sort of grabs boxes and doesn't really care about mm -hmm. smoothness. Um, mostly because it's supposed to be refined afterwards. Yeah, you, you can get a feathered like selection brush, but it's or, or you could just feather the selection, but it's still not perfect. Like it will like be within a certain border, and it does kind of make that weird pixely edge. Mm -hmm. So there are ways of after or after the fact fixing a lot of this, and you can just go grab the softest, very faint um, blurring brush, and you yeah. can just sort of blend your edges in and it's just to sort of take off that sharpness because not when when you go stare at your hand in real life is that edge of your finger very very sharp or is it actually mm. like a smooth sort of surface does it does it curve mm. off or does it become a knife's blade yeah i actually i actually use um in clip studio i used to use the the blurring the blur tool when i first started but i actually use the brush now there's like a watercolor brush it's really nice you can sort of you can paint with it 
but if you, you're gentle with it, you can just use it as like a blurring thing, and it's really like that. I, I hardly ever do shading anymore because I honestly am just so lazy. But when I do, <laughs> I typically do do cell shading, and then I use the watercolor brush and I just like blur it because it gives you so much control. But like, I, I'm not an expert on uh, on lineless stuff, but I would say uh, with the with like doing the body part separately, that is how I learned to do it. Uh, and it's how I probably will continue to do it because I'm like, how am I supposed to like control where my paint is going if it's just like going all over the canvas? Like it needs to have an area. But what what I what I did uh, is you draw out the body parts with your pen. So you know it's a nice, it's like a smooth but not completely harsh uh, aliasing pen or whatever. You know, your your typical like drawing pen. It'll have a, a smooth enough line. So you, you do all the body parts like that, and they're all nice and smooth. And then you go in each one. Either you lock the opacity and you just draw on that layer, or you have another layer above it as a clipping layer, and you just do the shading on that. And you can put more and more clipping layers on as you need them. But you can then just work on that specific body part, and you haven't got a selection limiting you and making your making you know basically what LD was talking about, uh, with everything coming out super sharp and having an edge to it. You can make everything a bit smoother, and then you, you can go to the the base layer, and and I did this as well do exactly what LD was talking about, get a blurring brush and just gently, gently go over the edge just to soften it a little bit. And since the clipping layer above it is just copying what's underneath, it will, up, you know, it will still be within, you don't need to redo the shading, you know, because you're just changing the sort of shape that the shading is going on to. And it's a super easy way of doing it. Also, I don't know who's doing what to Trixie's face today. <laughs> I actually like how the eyes look. It's so hard to get outlines to look nice with the line of drawing, but you kind of need them for the pony eyes. But I think you did a good job with them, myself. I think they're just trying to raise the eye. Or, right. Adjust the um, positioning on it because the for how far the forehead sticks. Ah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's like, uh, because of the eyes on Trixie was so, so far forward, it looks it looked pretty flat. In a way, so there needs to be some kind of uh, indication of, uh, you know, there actually being a kind of nose bridge here, this area, and it was very thin before. And uh, moving the eye a bit further down, as well as um, before, the eye was kind of uh, like this. It was almost a straight, a uh, an eye that you see you see from from the front, like. Uh, ones here so uh, and uh, wherever the pupil doesn't touch any any edge of the eye it uh, can give a certain like a little bit of a uncanny feeling uh, uncanny valley look and uh, if you look at uh, people's eyes and other eyes and cartoons actually you uh, can always see or more expressive eyes than say like Rick and Morty or something um, you can always see that the pupil touches some edge of uh, of the eye, uh, except if if the if the character is really really frightened, then uh, then that's just abject panic usually when the pupil doesn't touch mm -hmm. it or really surprised. So uh, by moving the pupil more f uh, more towards the nose bridge, then that. Uh, that gives more of a view of the eye from the side, uh, like it was sit in an eye socket. Um, you could almost look at it like this: that this is the eye from the front, so the pupil would still touch uh, touch it down below, uh, the edge of the eye. But from the side, you can think it as uh, something like this: the uh, eye sits in here. But what you actually see is this part, just a little bit more stylized. So this is invisible because it's in the head, and the other part is visible from the side. But usually you do a bit of stylization, so you get this uh, this ellipse, and you make it an ellipse as well, but with a little bit of uh, you know stylization up here. But you can by adding the eyelids or like the uh, lashes, you can actually indicate this part here. It doesn't just isn't that large. But it still kind of looks like it has something like that. Yeah, the the eyes in the show definitely have the like, the problem of they look exactly the same from side view. Yeah. But it, they somehow make it so you don't even notice. Like it looks okay in the show, but like it can look a bit jarring if you're not careful when you're doing art. 
And it's just sort of, I mean, if you, if you, if you ever done like anime art in your life or that sort of like what you tried first when you first did start like drawing or whatever, you, you'll definitely know like that this is what a front view eye looks like. This is what a side view eye looks like because they very heavily like differentiate those. Oh, yeah. yeah. And maybe this, this comes a bit from that actually. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like how I did it. Yeah. This, uh, so I, 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 I really, really suck at anime eyes. I, I do not know how to do them anymore. Uh, but yeah, so it's like general eye shape. And then you've got like from the side, you typically have this, this sort of like this arrow shape. Mm, yeah. Because it's, it's, it's a, it's a little, little ball. It's a little grape in a socket. It's a lens. So you've got, yeah. This, I think what it would look like. I think in the whole thing, the character that works best uh, in, in in like totally is uh, oh god, what's his name again? <laughs> Shit. Uh, come on, guys, help me out. Who? Uh, you gotta give us a hint here. Horse guy here. Horse. Oh, uh, sunburst. Yeah, right, right. Horse guy. Uh. I think he works the best because uh, you have this uh, three-quarter view of the head going on. Mm. You got the jawline happening. Exactly, and uh, yeah, the other faces uh, look a bit flat. I would even say here the this eye here. If you look at it, you see it best if you uh, if you mirror the canvas. Is a bit too far to the left. Hmm. One thing that I was going to say, and this is sort of related to all the stuff that we're talking about, like you, you've clearly put a lot of effort into to learning how to color, and some parts look really nice. Like Sunburst's like shirt looks beautiful. That's really nice. Like some of the shading you've got is just on point, uh, but it's it's like you put a lot of effort into coloring, and I see this a lot. Uh, I, I see this a heck, a heck of a lot. But like yeah. people people come into art and they're like, oh, I want to learn to draw really good. And they see these people doing like these beautiful paintings, uh, you know, mostly of like Princess Luna and stuff like that, like really beautiful feel- like landscapes and stuff. And it's like, they, they, they're like, I want to do that. And they, they, they push themselves and torture themselves to learn how to color super smoothly. And they want to do all this like beautiful painting and everything. But they haven't really put the time into learning how to to sketch i see this happening a lot and you end up with people with like beautiful coloring who haven't yet built up that like the actual drawing style and then it's like i feel like it's kind of probably a bit harder to 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 learn that drawing when you're when you, you're putting all this effort and time into the coloring and you you haven't got sort of like a cartoony style so i would say maybe just take a take a break from coloring things and like just do lots of sketches just lots and lots of sketches in like drawing books just make it try try going back to super cartoony stuff try a bit of more realism and st- stuff like that try out different styles and go between them and you'll you'll learn what it is you want to do and you will have a very focused and pers- purposeful art style then sorry you're going to say something bfc Please. or maybe not God, he died. Oh no. Hello? Hello? Oh, yeah, hi. Yeah, sorry. Uh, some kind of process, like testing thing from Lenovo started and uh, right. like hawked all the system resources. Froze, froze and... everything. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What uh, are you going to say? I heard something about like uh, drawing ability not developed and then uh, going to. Uh... Yeah, going straight to learning how to color beautifully without learning how to draw first, basically. Well, but... But if you can color, like, I mean, this took a lot of work. I mean, it's it's yeah, yeah. apparent that this was really a lot of work. And Definitely. I think uh, for name was Star... No, shit. Starburst? Star... Sunburst. Sunburst. Okay. <laughs> so Sunburst it worked, it worked out really well, I think. Um, there may be some issues, like you pointed out here, with the, uh, with, the with the leg, maybe. But, like, patterning on the, on the clothes, etc., and it's really beautiful, and um, yeah. But uh, like, I would fix fix the faces maybe on the on the other two, like uh, this eye maybe move it, or maybe even the. You can see my selections, right? Uh, no. Not overly, no. No. Oh, sorry. No, can't see the selections. Okay. You have to use like the laser pointer or a pen or something. So like, move this. To the right, so I'm gonna try that. 
if I'm on the right layer. <laughs> It works. Oh, okay. This also is kind of awkward. Mm. Whoops. What happened there? <laughs> I did, we didn't see anything change, so. You have to okay, <laughs> that's great. Maybe you will soon. <laughs> I think you've got to click off of the selection first, and then it like confirms it or whatever. Well. You gotta like make make the selection do the moving and then like click off of it. I think I don't know. It's, yeah. it's very confusing. But in my version, the uh, whole face disappeared, basically. So. Oh hey, I'm gonna. Oh, where's the? Oh okay. Where's there the we are. moving tool? It up. It updates. Okay. No yeah. problem. But drawing wise, what I just do want to get that is. It's a kind of awkward combination between a front view at the moment and a three, three quarters okay, view. Okay, yeah. So this is kind of pointing three quarters, and the eyes say front, almost. I think I think most things say say three quarters, but yeah, you got to yeah the, the shading eyes, yeah the, the eyes need to have a have a, a bend and stretch, so the one on the off off side should be smaller. Mm -hmm. And note, smaller this way, not smaller this way. Uh, because because that's that's something I learned very early on when you when you're doing the eyes. If I can just sketch like above her or something, you for third quarter you got eye, you got other eye. It should not be shorter this this way. It should only be shorter this way. That makes sense because it, it it's just like a perspective thing. Unless you got a crazy like fish eye lens going on, you're not gonna have such a harsh perspective. But you've got to have like at least a little bit of like softening there to 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 make it like go around the head. Yeah. Uh, unless anyone has any other critiques, I do. But I've had to switch to a different program <laughs> to get them done. I love I love Kibensuke's nose hole too. <laughs> I don't think that was Kibensuke's. Yeah. Uh, I think she means nostril. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> nose hole. <laughs> um, but yes. Uh, All right. It looks good. Whoever's fixed them. Uh, but, but yeah, I mean, my, my like I said, my my recommendation is do a lot of pencil sketching and don't necessarily focus on like I've got to like color all of these. You can do it like sketching on the computer if that's what you're more comfortable with that's fine but like uh you know, drawing with an actual pencil paper is very liberating and you can get a lot of control in there it's very important as a digital artist to to do some pencil drawing every now and then and i definitely don't do enough of it but you've got to like keep that in your your skill bank you know but you can do a lot of experimenting that way if it also if this is something ali talks about so i'm going to say it in her stead while she is moving house uh you know it, it forces you to to, to really like experiment you can't easily just like change everything and focus on the same picture over for, for ages you, you you do a sketch and it's like well okay i want to change it i might as well do a completely different sketch so then you're drawing lots of different things and drawing new sketches and drawing new sketches rather than focusing on the same one and that forces you to just try a lot of things and it's definitely what you want so throw my critique in here. I've had to go ahead and throw this through Clip Studio Paint to get it to work, so... Woohoo. I know. I had to get C tools. C++. Plus plus. Values. And CPC++. Plus plus. Values. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so I threw it to Grayscale. Um, very important tool, especially because a lot of things just now have it as an option. Just click it, and it turns on grayscale, and then pops it away, and haha, it's gone. Like, I can't what? see it on the stream yet. Yeah, it won't ever show up it's... on it. It's wait, hold it. It'll show up on yeah. the like the Picarto stream, but it won't show up for you. Oh, now it's coming up. No, it's just I, I was I didn't know whether it was behind or whether your your thing was specifically set to just show um, uh, draw file. There we go. Oh, okay. I so, think we can see it now. 
So one of the other issues I'm noticing here is the values of your shading. Um, your shading's deliciously wonderful, but it's inconsistent in the values that come from it. So if we look at yours, we can look at the, the black values under like the main, oh, yep. I guess throwing color on there doesn't work like that. One sec. Right here. <laughs> Da, 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 da. You got a new layer for that. There we go. Like if we look at the dark values on the main and under this leg here and there and under hers and basically the same the points where the the values would be very similar because they're all under the same amount of intensity of light based on their environment. If we look at those, they're inconsistent among the characters and among the objects that are around. One of the ways we can always guess or always check these is by throwing it to grayscale and going dang these values do not make sense anymore what is going on throw them off grayscale darken them out a bit throw them back onto grayscale cool we've mm -hmm. aligned ourselves what that sort of looks like if we take real pictures here and i've thrown them through grayscale so we have this picture of a stingray and we can see the values of dark so the dark under the car Oh, you're still doing it. Still doing it. The value under the car <laughs> is the same as the value on the wheel, is the same as the value right inside that well. It's the same value that you're getting where else, where else, where else. Anywhere that's actually going to be dark. You're getting the same sort of values inside of the bush over here too. Um, of course, it's slightly tinted based on the underlying color because this is not a perfect process. A perfect process involves splitting up all your color gamuts, uh, red, green, blue, for that, gr splitting them apart and grayscaling each one individually and then recombining. But this gets the point across anyway. Um, we can see that our, our dark values, same as our light values, are all very similar to each other. Uh, and same as with in this derpy. If we look at derpy here, we can see that her fuzz right over here Whoop. Same darkness as this lady's fuzz over here, and same darkness as the fuzz over here and inside of her bag, and over in the corner of the shoe, because that's where it's dark. We got reflected light for the rest of the shadow, that's why it's brighter than over on that fur. I hope that somewhat helps to get the idea across of abusing the living crud out of your tools to get that sort of even even brightness and even darkness that is going on and that will vastly improve your pictures uh if mm. you if... it has it helps so much in some of my pictures i don't use it with everyone but like it, there have been things where it's like i need to fix this and the gray scanning thing helps so much to like balance out i think particularly when doing like backgrounds because i don't know what colors i never know what colors to pick for backgrounds like watch this rugby what should the walls be oh god and there's like rugs uh, carpets and back, like different furniture and i'm like oh my god i don't know what to choose for these colors so like doing the gray skinny thing at least helps you know that the values are, are good and it's really helpful i hope that helps and if it doesn't mm -hmm. well sorry <laughs> <laughs> we did our best we tried our best but we didn't but we are just no. some ponies all right so pucker stir and then we have cute pencil case so we're going to do Pucker Sturve because they submitted before CPC. Holy cow! There is a battle of stuff going on down here. T. Pucker Sturve. Alright. Puck. That is a cutie cute. It's so adorable. One sec. I want to see what's going on over here. <laughs> what the heck? What? <laughs> all right, you two are ridiculous. <laughs> you three, four, all of you are ridiculous. <laughs> griffin, griffin. All right, so we're looking at the griffin. The burb. So much fluff. Do you have any questions for us? specifically about your picture or maybe anything else 
the best way Hi. to do a steak is medium rare. I, I do have oh. a question. Hey. Actually. <laughs> Hi. Um, I've actually gotten critique from other people, cool. and they basically suggest just changing the entire pose because it looks like crap. <laughs> uh, oh no. Especially like uh, the problem that I have are the back legs. They're just they yeah, do they not look, look attached, fucked. and. I think it's I think it's specifically this this one here. It just doesn't look like it could bend around that far and then sit in that position. Um, I don't even know. The, the lower you... one could work, but depending on how the hips uh, are. You kind of also don't see the knee because of the wings and the tail, so it's like. Yeah. And the commissioner wants me to show like the beans. <laughs> oh yeah. Beans are important. Mm. <laughs> Mm. Understanding. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um. So go look at a dog. And I'll tell you, there's plenty of dog pictures on the internet. Spent <laughs> hours upon hours finding this. Dog pictures are never ending. Oh. All right. <laughs> uh, go go look at dogs because they they have a very similar hip and often they're large enough that the hip shows a lot of that anatomy that goes on for that sort of mm -hmm. laying down. Like we got, we got, we got a picture of a dog. Oh, how can I share this? There we go. Picture of a dog right here. That's a picture of a dog with the beans showing. <laughs> come on, come on. Not quite the pose you're going for, but it gets, you can see a little movement on how that hip plays around. Mm -hmm. uh, there's more. There's always more. There's always more dog pictures, <laughs> just like cats. Uh, that's that'd be my suggestion for references. Go grab your references from the interwebs. Yeah. It looks like CPC is proving that more beans. Look, the Dalmatian is doing the same sort of leg thing that you're aiming for. So we can translate that sort of look of the Dalmatian. We'll just burp, show that to everyone. And there you go. Dalmatian with its legs doing the leggy thingy. That's yeah. its official name. <laughs> the leggy thingy. The leggy thingy. Uh, we, we can translate that back to the picture by using it as a magical reference. References are not cheating people. Use them, abuse them, have fun with them. But what it's showing is you cannot or that the leg, the, the bottom part of the hip does not move past the top part of the hip when it's leaning down, because from the butt end of it, like if we're looking at the back, you're gonna have this as the hips. So to get the bottom part, this part in red, to extend past like you have, uh, is, is going to be very uncomfortable for that poor animal. Although mm -hmm. saying that it did just grab its own tail with a beak, and those beaks are meant for <laughs> ripping apart skin, so... I, I mean... <laughs> freaking adorable. What I would do is I'd take that top leg, or I'd take that back beans, the back part of the leg, and just bring it forward. So it's up yeah. there. Ooh. Let's take this layer here. So it's up here and behind that front leg. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. you can still keep your one foot as it is, and all you have to do is redraw one. That's going to save you a lot of effort. Yeah, because I was I was at the point of just redrawing it completely, <laughs> to be honest. That's annoying to do. <laughs> like, someone suggested I would I draw it from more like a back view, like you see more of, of the butt, I guess. <laughs> but that, that would require me to draw it completely <laughs> again. Then you lose out on so much of that lovely chest fluff. It it exactly. also changes the what what the picture's trying to show, because mm -hmm. your your picture's like fun and playful in that. If it's from the back end, it can be seen as a different sort of picture. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll wink. <laughs> I get what you mean. <laughs> I would I would save my time move that just move the one leg up a bit 
call it a day. I really do love your wings. They're very simplistic, but they're Oh, good. those are just like sketchy wings. <laughs> yeah, but they're good. <laughs> And any other critiques? Because like this is the first time I've actually drawn a griffin, and it's like uh, I don't know where to go with this. Uh, well, if this is your first griffin, dang, well done. Put yourself <laughs> on the back. I mean, I've done like a bunch of research sketches for first, but <laughs> this is like my first serious griffin. <laughs> <Yeah. Thanks. laughs> but, I don't know. Like the claws are definitely like they're pain, yeah. aren't they? Yes, they're like <laughs> hands, but more difficult. <laughs> I think these are these are pretty pretty cool. Like with the thumb, looks good. I just like that it's uh, a little bit detached, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. This this finger coming up uh, further here with the joint a little bit a uh, bit uh, with a bit of distance between the thumb and the uh, finger joint. Mm -hmm. Pretty cool. I like the stylization. All right. Mm -hmm. Just thought maybe there's a way to make them look more relaxed or something. They just like tense. Mm -hmm. Nah, I don't get tense from them. Not at all. No. No. That's he good. <laughs> the the fact that the legs overlap each other, I mean that's a pretty relaxed pose as it is. Uh, your your pet will not be in that sort of sitting position with the hips sideways if they aren't relaxed. They'll be at yeah. attention. They'll be all feet on the ground ready to go. Yeah, I, I have nothing else to say about this beyond you missing an ear. You lost the other one. Your your the the feather fluff on the top doesn't actually go up high enough, and your head's not oh, tilted. Oh yeah. Yeah, I always forget those second year. <laughs> Don't worry, I've hunted Fluffy's eye down to stick ears on him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's about it. It definitely also needs a mouse holding on to its chest fluff. That seems to be important. Yeah. Yeah, I see, I see the little doodles, yeah. <laughs> Alright, well, unless you have any other questions, we'll move on to the next piece. No, I'm good. Thank you. No problem. Glad to be of assistance. And this is way easier than typing in the chat. Oh, totally. <laughs> Whoa, cute pencil case, big pictures. All right, CPC. It's a big picture. I, I believe it has stretched and a good chunk of a canvas on you. <laughs> so let's talk, uh, what's your question here? Before dogs, dogs, winky, seductive face, dogs. It's not a pony, but do you think you can give me some help with the feet? I've drawn a few things, or I've drawn this a few times, but I can't seem to get it right. There's something that looks weird. Yeah, you have no flex to the ankle. Humans humans have this thing right over here, and it allows this to flex on that and rotate about. When you step forward, you're actually rotating that downwards. Uh, 
and same with stepping forward. Like when you when you go to step forward, you're actually rolling, or you should be at least, unless if you're stepping flat footed, you should be rolling from the ball of your ankle forward, and that means this goes upwards. So giving giving it that rotation is going to really really help give it a bit more life to it. Unless those boots go all the way up and they've totally locked an ankle, which is holy roly ankle, that's going to be tire f tiring. Because I want you to try walking without moving your, uh, your the, the muscles down there. It gets really, really tiring on your legs. And I only know this because of the Ministry of Silly Walks. <laughs> See, someone's doing the Ministry of Silly Walk over here. What else is missing? Well, I don't know what these birds are doing, but I uh, all I can imagine is ah uh, mother effing seeds. <laughs> all right, that's pretty um, it's pretty silly. <laughs> You got any other questions for us there, CPC? It looks like Maze is uh, suggesting you add some muscle mass to the legs, which makes sense unless they're very, very gangly legs. Because humans, humans have this big set of muscles back here. So it's like, yo, and then you got a bone right in over here and another set of muscles somewhere over here. Humans are weird. We're we're bizarre things. It's a good thing you're a sentient pile of fluff. I don't know how to draw a monocle sideways. <laughs> All right. Anyone else have any art they'd like us to critique? Hello. Any other questions they have for us? And any other fluffy eyes they'd like to hug? God, I had to, for some reason, my mic stopped working. I was just going to be like, have I, have I missed it? I guess I have. <laughs> My mic wasn't working when I came back. That's great. I didn't hear oh, no. a thing out of you. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, well, no, I, I, I wasn't like trying to talk or anything. I could see that I wasn't. No sound was going. I just tried to say hello. But then I had to replug it twice. It's been really silly today. You should just boop it. Boop it. Hmm. I, I saw these sketches, CPC, in the channel. I, I love the little fluffy one. It's so cute. I don't know if that's a dog or a cat or what, a fox or. It could be many different animals. I'm gonna go with dog. Yeah, it's got like a dog tail, but it's got like cat ears and I don't know. But it's cute. It reminds me of all the, the fluffy of the animals I used to draw before I did pony stuff. Which all my watches are just like, why don't you draw your, your animals anymore? What happened to Zai Raccoon? What happened to Ichigo Raccoon? I'm just like, sorry. Long haired chihuahua, that's cute. Are those a thing? Does it still give like know. a chihuahua? I 
for some reason the, the the little annotations and doodles actually look like they're on the page. If you took that little fluff that's kind of crossing over the page and like altered it so the fluff was like kind of jutting out at a different angle when it hit the next page, then it would actually look like it was just part of the drawing. <laughs> All right, well, it looks like no one else has any art for us, so we're going to call that a day. Thank you all for joining us, and we'll see you again next week, hopefully. Wait, what's, what's happening next week? What's next week? The 125th? Uh, yeah, it's 125 of these things. Should we do something? Hopefully we'll have Ali back. I don't know. We're, we're going to stream. Ooh. I know. That'll be our 125th party. <laughs> we might even have some banter. Who knows? <laughs> we might buy 125 Kinder surprises and mail them to Fluffy's eye. Who knows? <gasps> Wait, would why, why would you need to mail them to me? I could just buy them at the store. Because they'd be Canadian ones. Oh my God! Is there a difference between Canadian and British ones? Yeah. Um. Yours. What? Yours what? has, uh, the the chocolate separated in the white and brown, right? So one uh -huh. side's white, one side's brown. Yeah. Ours are fully brown on the outside but on the inside of the brown it's white and so the chocolates mixed together but still like separated by uh, a layer. it's delicious oh. it makes it, it makes I, li it I like it being white on the inside brown on the outside. but why not send them to our american friends who can't get them because americans think they're stupid two thousand dollars that's so. illegal <laughs> <laughs> you can secretly do it or you could just throw it really hard <laughs> Or go by go by zombie travel. Just go into the ground. Last time I mailed <laughs> stuff out to Ali Claw that was candy. One of the questions they asked me was, "Is this Kinder Surprises?" And I had to oh tell them God. if it was or not because it's illegal it's, to it's send them Kinder. It's such a crazy eggs. thing. It's like it's as bad as drugs. It's like, oh my God, children aren't that stupid. You, <laughs> this is true. the The Americans do now have Kinder eggs, but they have this clear plastic ring on them. Apparently. Oh my gosh. But it's like the, the little yellow thing, I don't know how you'd even swallow that. Like, you're not going to shove the entire chocolate yes, eggs that's right how. into your mouth. That's exactly like... how. But, like, that's not. You, you bite into the egg, and then you got this yellow capsule thingy. Star Lizard but, has like, this. But, the, but the, the more important thing is every single kid who ever has a Kinder egg is more excited about the toy than the chocolate. <laughs> they know it's in there. They're just getting going for that capsule. They're not just going to, oh, chocolate, shove it in my face. They know what the, they're like, yes, I get the little toy. And they're going straight for that little <laughs> capsule. Like, why would they just forget it's there and shove the thing in their house? Take the stupidest possible answer you have for it <laughs> and just amp that up a bit because someone's going to find a way to be stupider and of America's course, the type of place like, where you can sue for like it. Like everyone does it. <laughs> I think, it only I takes think that the actual suit. wasn't the actual law that forbids it like even older against just mixing uh, toys and food. Yeah, it's, so that uh, something is in a cake or something oh, or in a muffin, like, you know. Get, crack down, go to McDonald's, just go right and crack down those Happy Meals. Just no, no, nope. it's because that's in a clear plastic bag separate from it. Right. You can't. They don't allow it to be it's just so hidden inside of it. <laughs> yeah, you could like smuggle tools into prison. It's just such a non-issue here that it's just like this is a bit weird. I do understand the, the the point of it, but it's just it's like it's such a non-issue that it doesn't even matter. Non-issue. Yeah, but yeah, <laughs> but maybe it's some kind of precedence stuff because you know if Kinder can do it, then someone else can do it, and that <laughs> true. And yes, that's they a good fuck point. it up, and then that's a very good point. Yeah. It should, yeah, and that's why they people they they never want to do things on a case by case basis, even though everything makes more sense on a case by case basis. <laughs> That's true. You need to be. Uh, you know what I need to do? <laughs> the next time, the next time we hit dead air on my radio show, uh, the, the go-to subject we used to have on the shows on Saturday Radio were like, well, one thing we love to talk about anyway was stupid old laws, and we used to do that a lot on uh, this one show, Pub Crawl. We had, and that was, it was we would just like talk about stupid laws that don't that are still in existence, but like no one follows them because <laughs> there are like a ton of crap like that. There were some really funny ones from England, but I can't remember where they were now. I have to look them up again. I have a stupid law in our town. I'm not allowed to ride a horse down King Street on Sunday. I think there was... Because the, the show I was talking about is run by an Australian guy. He, 
I think at one point when we were talking about this, he said that like there was like a thing saying that all like taxis had to have like a bit of hay or something from like back in like the days when they were horse and carriage taxis. And like I, I, he might have been joking, but he said that you can like you will like see hay in every taxi. But I think he was kidding about that. I would have to look that up. <laughs> That is so cute, CPC. Oh my god, that is just amazing. So fluffy. <laughs> it still looks like a dog though, don't I? It's cute. Anyway, um, are we done with the, the critique things? We are. No one submitted anything and we went into full band mode. So yeah. I'm going <laughs> to shut down the stream. Thank you all for coming, and we'll see you again next week. Bye-bye. Thank